plus one plus one equals three. Welcome to our very Oh, my man yes. here. Oh, my yeah. yeah. Oh, my yay. Two Fight Club in captain in the building. Oh, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on. This is the second member of the Bull Maya Fight Club joining us in back-to-back -back week. Right down below, there he is, the muscle of the group, Mr. Thomas. Manager of 5150, and we are so honored that you've decided to join us here. He is Mr. Bud Heavy. How the hell are you doing, sir? I'm living the dream, man. How about you guys? So, you mean all 360 keep your face? I'll make it look pretty, but I'll spit it first. That's who I am, so... My apologies. Let me try there that all go. over again. Uh, can you go. hear me now there, Papa Smokes? I can hear you now, Munson. All right. Now we can get into the singing. I'll do that one more time as Master right, need... 69 telling me, Volume Bob, pay attention to the buttons. <laughs> good evening, Vassar, of course. And yeah, good man. To B. Carter once again joining us here. Wonderful. It's going to be fun. Well, let me start that all over again. I, we're what the video bros. I'm Bobby Monson, that man beside me, the man with the angelic voice. And as Bastard 69 so well put it recently, if he smokes, he pokes, and nobody smokes more than that man beside me. Papa Smokes! Papa Smokes, how you doing, sir? Oh, yeah, Munson. It is Thursday night. I'm ready to go. Volume or no volume, I'm here for you every time. We can get through any of this, and uh, I'm pleased to be here. How are all my wrestling people doing out there as well? And hopefully everybody is doing fantastic. And, yes, fired up indeed. It's going to be a fun night here tonight. And joining us once again, Auntie Wooji. Wonderful to see you. Can't wait to see you down at PPW Presents. Love is Dead on Saturday, February the 18th. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to get to talk about that later in the program. If you're joining us in a live capacity, uh, they're on youtube or on twitch right here thank you for joining first of all and second of all this is a double header that's what we promised we're going to be bringing you fusion and ring respect radio each and every week here on our local establishment and on the video bros network so the first half dedicated fusion we're going to recap fusion here in just moments and the second half we're going to give you a couple minute break in between we'll be back with ring respect radio and tonight we're going to be dedicating it all to our good friends, the company that we love and work for, Papa Smokes, Prairie Pro Wrestling. We're going to do a couple of watch-alongs. We're going to talk about the upcoming event. And we've got two free tickets to give out on the show here tonight. That's right, two tickets to Love is Dead in Saskatoon, Saturday, February the 18th. All you got to do is pay attention to the stream. Make sure that you're subscribed to OLE, our local establishment, on YouTube. And also to Prairie Pro Wrestling on YouTube as well, too. If you're doing all those and you're paying close attention... You'll find the answer to the question later in the program that you need to answer in order to win yourself two free tickets to that great event. And it's going to be a big one, Bob Smokes. But, hey, we have to get into MLW Fusion. And we got a little bit to talk about here tonight. This was exactly what I thought was going to start to happen to Fusion once I heard MLW Underground announce. I hope this isn't going to become a trend going forth. But this... This was not my favorite episode. I'm sure B. Carter can, can attest to this. If you watch tonight, this was not one of the best episodes we've ever seen of MLW Fusion. A far cry from what we had just last week. And it's sad, too, because they've had a number of inconsistent episodes over the last month or two. After all summer and fall, it was it was hot. It was heating up. It, they, they were doing the best with what they had. And now it seems like we're kind of getting the uh, the extra stuff that they had from tapings. And it just, it's a lot of filler material on here these days. And it's sad because Fusion used to be such a strong show, but the, it hasn't been lately. Yeah, and unfortunately, again, like we said just last week, Underground, we're going to have to try to win a way to find it, reach out to some of our American friends there and see if we can do some sort of watch along in behind the scenes so we can keep up to what's going on in MLW because it seems like that's where all the good content is going to be. Again, they did heavy promotion on this episode of Fusion for Reels, for Underground, for Tuesday night with the big title fight between Alexander Hammerstone and EJ and Duca. Uh, but this episode of Fusion, we started off with tag team action. And again, this is where the show started off quite well. And again, we have, looks like a first time chatter here on a live capacity. 
Our Birdman 15 says, Papa Smokes. Yeah, man. Hey, this is awesome. We're rocking like and rolling it. here tonight. I like it. That's good. That's good. And again, make sure to pay attention if you want an opportunity to win big. And that's win two tickets to the PPW Presents. Love is Blind. That's coming up in the second half of the show. But make sure you follow it along all along. Get your questions in. Talk to Pop Smokes and I. We love a lively chat. It's it's ruckus up in here. We have a good time with it. Um, but we had tag team action. And uh, this is going to be a big theme throughout our entire night on both sides of the show here, Pop Smokes. is tag team action. Uh, the Samoan SWAT team. That's our boy, Lance Anawaii. Oh, yeah. So, and, of course, the big man, Juicy Banal, undefeated in MLW so far as a tag team, taking on the FBI. And this ended up being Little Guido, known as the uh, known for the FBI team, but alongside with Ray Jazz, a relative newcomer here. This I this I enjoyed. But uh, let's uh, let's just go here. I don't know what was worse, the matchups or the guy doing color commentating voiceovers. <laughs> You know, it was, yeah, it was tough. It really was. And even, like, I mean, I, I have the utmost respect for both Dombrowski and Matt Stryker. I like them both. But yeah, yeah. they really are missing Bokini. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. They're missing. I think they are. I think they are. And you can see, like, in the last, uh, since the restart after the last break at Christmas time, you can see that there's something different in the production value of the entire uh, show. And, and it's funny about the comment that was just made because we were joking around when we watched the show that I, I said, it sounds like Mike Matt Stryker is doing some of these voiceovers on his phone speaker in his car or something like that. <laughs> like it just didn't really sound too pro. And uh, I love the guys, but uh, I, I think they don't have a lot to work with right now. We got B Carter saying they need to get the team from Prairie Pro. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not opposed to this. I mean, I, I would be quite okay if Court Bauer wanted to reach out to the video bros and get our high level energy for some MLW commentary. I mean, I, I'm up to the task. How about you, Pop Smokes? We going to take that call? I'm completely down, months, and I've been saying we got to go down to a show one of these times and introduce ourselves in person and such as. Nothing uh, competes with an in-person handshake and meeting. I mean, let's let's do it. Let's reach for the stars. That's right. We can we can get there, and we'll get there with the help of all our great fans that watch along every single week along with us. But uh, this matchup, this there wasn't much of a matchup here. Let's let's not get ourselves juicy. And Lance are on a whole different level right now. It was great to see little Guido. Uh, Ray Jazz got some nice stuff in. They uh, gave a good background of this young man of a very seasoned. Uh, Matt wrestler and catches catch can style wrestling. Uh, so that really built him up very, very well. Uh, so I like to see that. I like to see that story being told, told and sold to us. But again, the Samoan SWAT team, they're after the gold. They're really looking at it. They even said they want hustle and power. Where the hell has Tank been been as of late? We haven't seen him for quite uh, since the battle ride, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, eventually tag team gold has got to be up for grabs and the Samoan SWAT team have got to be in line now. I mean, they've taken out every team that the company has put in front of them, destroyed every team that's been put in front of them. I think they have to be in line now for a tag team title opportunity. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I liked this match a little better than the last couple of Samoan SWAT team TV matches because they had a couple of total squash matches against unknown job guys. But this, the FBI, was something just a little bit different. There's a name value with that. Uh, Guido and the, and the Stromboli and the boys had their run in WWE back a long time ago. I saw those guys live have a match in the arena here in Saskatoon in, I want to say, 05 or 06, something like that. And uh, really, honestly, Guido did, doesn't look much different than then. Uh, he's maybe got a couple crow's feet or something like that but he looks pretty good and i like the fact that they've got the veteran teamed up with the young guy was it ray jazz yeah ray jazz yeah yeah and he looks good he looks like he's got some potential he's got an awesome physique and uh he's got that amateur background and everything he looked like he was doing uh like they let uh Samoan swap team let the fbi get a couple of spots on them at least so it wasn't a complete squash match it, it looked like uh these guys uh the fbi had a little more fight in them than the last few opponents of the samoan swat team so uh 
I'm all for this. Uh, I think it did double duty. It put this Samoan SWAT team over again and also kind of debuted this uh, Ray Jazz kid. And uh, again, the guy looks like he could have potential. Yeah, he really does. So, again, I'd like to see more of Ray Jazz, of course, moving forward. Samoa SWAT team, they could be on every single damn week as far as I'm concerned. In fact, if they give me them on Fusion, I'll continue watching. doesn't matter how many other matches that they put on there that I'm not a big fan of. As we yeah. are now being joined in the chat, Mel Ball Collins joining us. How are you doing? Wonderful to see you. Thank you for stopping into the show. It is hopping right. in here. We got a crowd pop of smokes. The chat's rocking and rolling. I knew we could do this. Everyone's, everyone's, you know, they, they, they hear free. They get, they know that money's delivering the free tickets later in the show. So they come stop on by to party with the video bros. Cause that's what happens when you join us here on stream, anything goes, anything can happen. You can win big. It's always a party up in here Thursday night. So thank you for joining in. Um, as we move along on this one, we had EJ and Duca dropping his promo, getting ready for the last man standing match this Tuesday night on Reels, the debut of MLW Underground. Again, he's fired up. He sounded good. Very convincing going into the match with Alexander Hammerstone. And we've had nothing but good things to say about Duca's promos leading up to the, uh, his, or during and leading up to his feud with Alexander Hammerstone. He's delivered a couple real big bombs, and uh, by bombs I mean good ones. And then tonight's was no different. I don't know. I don't know where he came from, but it's only in this run against Hammerstone that I've really noticed his promo ability is quite excellent. And uh, he delivered this perfectly with absolute conviction. And uh, I, I've completely turned around in my thoughts about Nduka. He he's act, he's selling this feud awesomely. And uh, with great promos like that, and the look that he has, this is a legit, more than legit contender for Alexander Hammerstone. And uh, we don't know the backstage uh, decisions that are being making there that are being made at this time. But uh, I could completely believe that uh, EJ and Duca could come out of this last standing match as the new MLW champion. And that will really throw a wrench in the plans for the big match of Alexander Hammerstone versus Jacob Fought 2 coming up uh, this weekend, actually. So, um, I, I, you know, I mean, it, maybe it's breaking kayfabe a little bit when they go ahead and do that kind of stuff. But who knows? We never know. Maybe they're pulling the wool over all our eyes, Court Bauer, maybe... Maybe a little trickier than we're giving them credit for. But after that, we got a little bit of a scene with the Bulldogs saying that they're at home in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, infamously coming from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. This was really Davey Jr. showing some moves to the Billington Bulldogs, telling them what you got to be able to do to accomplish fighting the Beaumaier Fight Club. It was filler. <laughs> yeah, but... They got them on screen, though. That's the thing. Yeah. And I think they just need to bring those kids along slowly. One's 19, one's 21. I mean, they're just dipping their toes into the pool at this time. And they need to get, uh, they need some time to work on stuff. Now, unfortunately, I don't think Davy Boy Jr. is the guy to teach them about promos. They'll, they'll have to go somewhere else for that, I suppose. But um, I don't know. I think it's good that they're participating in this tag team division. Uh, I think it's good that they're bringing in some new blood, the, some guys that have a name behind them and a reputation and stuff. And uh, I think this is uh, just sufficient to get them on TV and for us to get another look at them and they can say a couple things and, and just be seen next to a, a, you know, a decent level star like Davey Boy Smith Jr., yeah, you bet there, Bob Spokes. Um, but yeah, as uh, B. Carter say, poor segment. Again, yeah, I, I I can see people's reasoning for feeling that way too, again. And it's a lot to do with Davey Boy Smith Jr. Great in the ring, looks great, has everything going for him, but doesn't have that charisma that a lot of wrestlers do, and especially not the charisma of his opponent, Alex Kane, when it comes to the Bull My A Bulldogs feud that's going on. We'll talk huh. about Alex Kane in just a moment. But first, we got to get to this next Big matchup on the card, and I'm talking big as in there was a big guy in it. <laughs> Dr. Dax, who we haven't seen in quite some time, who has been the the sideshow pet to Holodead most of the time, usually on a leash, comes out to fight Vinny Pacifico. It happened. <laughs> Dax wins. I. What else do you want me to say? Yeah, there's not a lot you can say. Um, I... 
I'm going to try and be positive about this. Vinny Pacifico also looked like a guy that maybe you could do something with at some point, kind of. He looked physically all right. He had a pulse. Uh, he had boots and gear. He was in there, and he did some stuff. Uh, whatever he could do against big, clumsy Dr. Dax, who is very big and reminds me physically of the Abyss. However, he's not in the same league whatsoever as a wrestler as the Abyss. Uh, at any rate, uh, yeah, this was a match. I don't know what they're doing with Dr. Dax. They had that uh, faction going for a while, that strange sangre with Dr. Dax, Hollow Dead, Arez, and Gangrel. And that just, there doesn't seem to be any of those people left. We saw Gangrel a month or two ago have a, a match, yep. whereas he was kind of the manager of Strange Sangre. But I don't know what's going on here. Dax usually is on the leash and stuff, and now he's got a match. We've seen him have one other match before, too, but uh, I don't know what they're doing here. There can't honestly be an angle involving Dr. Dax in the future, can there? I mean, I don't know. This is just uh, inexplicable to me, but it's like, uh, you know, it's like a preliminary match that they cut out of the main show or whatever and then just ran out of stuff to put on so they just did this there we go there's there's gangrel's big appearance of the season he was one yeah. of the many bodies laid out by the yeah. mysterious card caller that they still haven't really got around to but i want to go back to this for a second because you can now officially call it the gag match which stands for garbage absolute garbage according to Garbage. <laughs> I love that. Um, but yes, after that uh, wonderful piece of wrestling. Oh, God, I can't even say that with a straight face. We got a promo from Taya Valkyrie. And this promo consists of her saying, is it hot in here? No, nope, it's just me. And what's even hotter is someone who's coming to MLW very soon. Ooh, who could she be talking about? Oh, <laughs> maybe it's her husband that's been announced only everywhere for this coming weekend. Uh, over at MLW, so of course, uh, anybody who knows, John Hennigan, Johnny Fusion, heading his way to MLW, and that's really what this was about, is to allude to his appearance coming up. Yeah, and it's kind of too bad that she didn't have a match to push or anything like that. Do, do we know who her opponent is on the weekend? Is it uh, Billy Starks or something like that? No, I think that match happened on a previous taping that they haven't aired yet. If I'm not mistaken, she might okay. be fighting Delmi Exo this right weekend yeah well that might be good yeah hey, we've be carter we need your help yeah yeah <laughs> he's like uh joe rogan's jamie he just had, gets him to look everything up for him as <laughs> <Yeah>. he's talking <laughs> hey well to turn it over to our fact checker in the chat b carter Ooh, but del del me <laughs> del me exo we saw as part of the c stars when they were first trying to get the featherweights division going and uh she looks like a good athlete. I could see her having some good singles matches. So I would be interested in seeing Taya Valkyrie versus uh, Del Exo. Yeah, well, hopefully that is the matchup, but I'm sure we'll find out in just moments, of course. But uh, moving on from there, it was promo, promo, promo. No, it's a good promo, at least. We got Hammerstone's promo leading into the match with the Duca. This was fantastic. Great by Alexander Hammerstone. Yeah, and he needed a neat, uh, uh, a really okay. good promo after that. Awesome. Yeah, okay, right. Pop smoke, awesome. Right. I was yeah. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You're on top of it, but I, I'm pretty sure Delmi has a match though. This okay. Week. Good. So I, I, yeah. I would like to see that. Yeah. But I was going to say, uh, Hammerstone needed a really strong promo after that banger by uh, EJ and Duca earlier, mm -hmm. which, uh, I mean. That's what I like about getting, hearing both sides of the story is sometimes the first promo is so good and you're just thinking, my God, what's the next guy going to say? There's not much he even can say. Well, Hammerstone <laughs> proved me wrong again and uh, he, his promo was even more convincing, sounding more like the veteran and uh, getting personal with EJ and Duca. And there was some, uh, there were a couple of rocks slung during that uh, promo and a couple of... Uh, gut shots that might have been gone a little below the belt there with uh, some of his mockery. And uh, I like it, man. It's just heating up this match beautifully. <laughs> As yeah. Carter mentioned, I don't respect yeah. you. You're a boy yeah. hammer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he killed it. 
And this is what I mean. This is what made Hammer interesting in the first place. Is not only is he good in the ring, but the dude can talk. And when he's fired up and serious, he's a great promo. Yeah, I forget that sometimes when I think of Hammerstone, I think of some of the great matches he's had. I think of his great build and all that stuff, and and his cool look as a wrestler in the ring. But uh, I forget sometimes that he's pretty good on a promo. And he brings emotion into it, and I think that's what uh, that's what's needed nowadays. Instead of memorizing scripts and trying to imagine that you're emotional in certain parts or something, no, you got to get into it and, and say the shit that you're actually feeling, and uh, and that way it, it comes out naturally. People are people can't be bullshitted so easily. People know bad acting when they see it in a movie, and they know when someone's not being sincere when they're talking to you and uh it's even just a feeling sometimes and that's that's the beauty of a good promo is it's the opposite of that you get the feeling he's actually talking to you he's actually telling you the truth and letting you peek in on on his actual feelings at the time yeah you bet so um after hammer's great promo of course you can never go wrong with this man right here i could listen to this guy talk all day Bomaye, Bomaye, Bomaye. It's Alex Kane and Mr. Thomas. I just, whatever he has to say was fantastic. And he's talking about the Bulldogs. He start, then he starts disrespecting the UK or and stuff, saying that nobody good has ever come out of there and they haven't been into the States in 50 years. He says that they've got bad teeth. I mean, Alex Kane was just a whole ball of fire here tonight. And I, I love listening to it. He's never short of the, of the punches. Always, always. And again, another treat for us getting to hear verbally on screen from my close personal friend, Mr. Thomas, who they they've realized now is a talker. We didn't realize when we interviewed him what what a great personality that guy has and what a funny dude he is and what a well-spoken guy. Well, apparently MLW figured that out finally, too, because they're letting him in there. Instead of being the silent, mean-faced bodyguard, now he gets to talk a little bit. And they're not giving him a whole promo because Kane is the star, but he'll just give a nice little intro, a nice fastball right down the plate, and then Alex Kane just knocks it out of the park. He's got the mockery. He's got the uh, uh, just making his opponents look about an inch tall with his jokes and, and his threats and everything. Fantastic work, as always, from the Suplex Assassin. And see, B. Carter saying it enjoyed the promo, but it's hard to get excited for the match. You know, and that might just be some of the charisma side of Davy Boy that makes it hard to get into the advertised match for this weekend between him and Alex Kane in a catches catch can no ropes matchup. I like the concept of this matchup, and I think both guys are very capable of putting on a great matchup in there. And I think that. Alex Kane has enough personality to keep the personality side of the whole match going, while at the same time delivering a very serious catch-as-catch-can style matchup, and I hope that they give us that. I'm really looking forward to it based on the concept, because I myself, and I know you too, Papa Smokes, big fans of catch-as-catch-can wrestling. For sure, and uh, I think these are two guys that can pull that off, because these are two... uh, wrestlers that are that have done the amateur style some kinds of uh <clears throat> excuse me mma style and all that too and uh th- yet yeah, this kind of a match doesn't need ropes if they're just going to grapple and uh and do uh and do some striking moves then they aren't going to be uh they aren't going to do the rope work running the ropes climbing the ropes all that kind of stuff now having said all that i'm mildly worried about that because you remember this isn't the first no ropes match we've had in MLW since you of I have been watching you know what I'm talking about the last one was Filthy Island by chance. Filthy Island and that had some potential too because uh Dominic Garini was in it the Von Erics were in it or not the Von Erics um no they ended up interfering in it later but there were some wrestler dudes that were in that match and it was kind of like well all right we might we might get to see some serious grappling of some kind, and it it just didn't turn out like that at all. Of course, everything was a little bit topsy-turvy on Filthy Island to, in the first place, to, I mean, to say the least. They're, they're 
sound man was bud heavy for one thing that was almost my favorite part of it but uh <laughs> but i'm still gonna try and be optimistic about this match just because i i think kane's really good i think davy boy can hold up his part of it to do a kind of serious match like this and hey this is what mlw and fusion is supposed to be all about is mixing styles and having different uh, styles clashing in opponents and all that kind of stuff. Have a little jujitsu match. Have a little amateur wrestling match. We, of course, work it up a little bit in the pro wrestling style. But uh, I'm going to remain uh, optimistic that this might be good. Yeah. Again, that's uh, that's uh, optimism that's going to carry us. Uh, up next, we had a promo from Sam Adonis, who made his debut in MLW just last week. I made a very impactful debut, of course, and uh, delivered a great promo afterwards. I had a feeling that they had said that he was in the main event of this week, but I guess I was wrong. So a uh, promo is what we got from Sam Adonis, which finished with him saying that a wise man once said, a genius is crazy before he's rich. So he says he's on his way to being a genius. Yeah, I, I like this Sam Adonis already. His uh, debut was good, especially probably to an audience who's not all that familiar with him. He came out good. He looks like a like a top of the middle card guys kind of dude. You know what I mean? Like this, I'd say he could be possibly a future uh, middleweight champion kind of material type guy. I also think that um, his uh, alliance with Cesar Duran will work in his favor. And um, this was a pretty good promo tonight as well. Uh, he's got the whole style where you, you know that he worked it out on paper beforehand and all that. And still he deliver, delivers it with some uh, seriousness. He's got a good voice. He's got a cool look and all that. I'm into Sam Adonis. I'm interested in what they're going to do with him. Yeah, very curious to see how it goes. Again, he likes to beat people up. He's not looking to be a star. He just wants to be the best at what he does. After that, pop folks, we get to that time of the night. It's time for the main event of the evening. This match is another overstuffed six-man package of luchadors where we're not going to get to actually see anybody show up the talent that they have. One fall. One fall. Sorry, I just had to say it again. I, I, I'm tired of these matches. We've said it before. These are very cooperative little luchador matchups that feature everybody showing up to put Microman over. And I did not need this as a main event. I didn't even really need it on the show, period. Uh, on one side of the teams, we had Delirious. Okay, that's a positive. Mini Abismo Negro, who at this point, I'm tired of the fact that he's been pigeonholed into these matchups every time and we don't get to see his true talent on display and then good god azteca 31 like we need one of cesar's henchmen in a mask fighting in the main event versus la Estrella making a debut in mlw from dragon gate hey a dragon gate guy that sounds interesting nope didn't get much of that lindsay dorado the mlw middleweight champion who played second fiddle to the big star Micro Man, of course. So, yeah. And then they should have sent us to Dragon Gate again. I damn well agree, actually. I could have gone for another Dragon Gate matchup instead of what we got. This is exactly what every single one of these matches is. It's had the same spots, the same cooperation. The only difference was Astral had got pushed, or no, sorry, Lindsay got pushed by Delirious into Astral, who didn't see it. Thinks that Lindsay was against him, leaves, goes to the back. Thanks for coming out. We don't get to see anything of you. And now it's a two versus, well, sorry, no, one and a quarter versus three person matchup. Yeah. And, and man, the odds are stacked against them. And that yet, you know who's going to win this match because, like you said, it's the same fucking match that we get with these guys every time. Mini Abismo Negro has, has had to do the job. I guess he didn't do the job in this match tonight, but he's been pinned by Microman so many times now, and uh, the only difference in this match is that Gino Medina wasn't in it this time because they've let him go too. But, uh, yeah, I, I didn't... I 
wouldn't even want to see this as the opening match just to get warmed up. And this, they present this as the main event on, on this show. And it's just, it's sad, really. Yeah. <laughs> Young yeah. Bird, yeah, you're right. Well, I mean, yeah. This, uh, we ended up chatting through most of this match because it just wasn't interesting. I don't care. I don't need to see Microman get put over. He's funny in certain spots backstage with some of the boys, but enough of the Microman push. It even made me make this statement at the beginning. I fear they'll put the MLW middleweight championship on Microman before the end of the year. Uh, I pray that you're wrong about that, Munson. That's just awful, but... And yet, it's probably in the realm of possibility. I don't yeah. know. I don't even want to think about it. But I know that they've got a thing going with Microman. They're going to push him. The, each individual crowd seems to like seeing him once, you know, because it's kind of one of those attractions, something you don't see every day. It's like, uh, you know, I don't want to say it, but it's like seeing the midget match or, or the the giant or whatever kinds of characters you have in your wrestling company. And yeah, Microman's a, a marvel, you know, like it's, it's amazing. He can do the things he can with the limitations he has physically. Yes, I get it. it it's, it's, it's a nice story and everything, but I just don't want to watch these matches and I feel bad for the talent that has to get buried in order to put him over. Yeah. Like B. Carter saying, diminishing five other guys in the process. Uh, they need to have some more pride. I agree. And again, it's nothing. I'm, I'm not trying to slag off Microman by any means. Again, like like you said, it's it's astonishing, despite his small comings, pun intended, uh, that he is capable of doing what he does. And I mean, I applaud it. And again, I don't mind it in a certain capacity every once in a while. There's some fun spots. The Battle Riot spot was fun with him and everything like that. But yeah, it just... Microman winning the belt would be worse than David Ark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, right up. Yeah. You know what it is. That, that is the kind of booking it becomes. I mean, I guess, well, I mean, our cat was even less a wrestler than Microman, but it's about the same weight. <laughs> I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it, it was one and done. This went down to Estrella not being there to assist. And somehow Lince Dorado and Microman do everything to take out a team of three and get a victory in this one, uh, finishing off Azteca 31, a victory that is unnecessary and unwarranted and has me fearing that this is what Fusion is going to become, is the dumping ground for the extras while Reels will get all the good stuff moving forward. Yeah, that's probably what it's going to be too. And uh, just as a footnote on this match too is just, it's so di diminishing to uh, to the middleweight champion right now, Lince Dorado. I mean, they've always treated that title with a similar respect to the open weight championship or the heavyweight championship, giving the champion a respect, you know, and an integrity kind of, and then they stick him in a match like this. And it's just, how are we supposed to take the belt seriously or the championship seriously? And how are we supposed to take Dorado seriously? Well, that's just it. And again, we know the guy can work and he does some fantastic stuff, but why is that not on display? Why do we, uh, why are you booking your champion in one of these matchups when you could have him one-on-one -on -one with some of the fantastic talent that's been gracing the MLW ring in the middleweight division? They've got tons of them there. There is no necessity to have these matchups filling all your time when you've got these great competitors that can give you some one-on-one -on -one bangers. That's just it. And especially with... Uh... Lucha guys, they they can they can do their matches. They can put on a great match, but when there's too many of them, it's just too much stuff. The ring's all clogged up with hurricanas and 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 all the rest of it. I just like we've said all along, we've had some excellent Mexican talent come through. I'd like to see them one on one. Hey, both you guys, I want to see all your stuff in this match, and let's have a good time. That's the fun thing about Lucha is just seeing one-on-one, -on -one, in my opinion. Yeah, and there can be great Lucha. Yeah, one-on-ones are fantastic in Lucha matches. I know that they love their 3v3 six-man tags and stuff like that. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. It's too much, too much, just back and forth, guys getting their spots in as opposed to actually having a wrestling match. So, again, maybe not our flavor is a better way to put it, but it doesn't seem like 
it was necessarily anybody's flavor because I don't see this selling people I wanted to watch week after week. But again, we're glad that they watch our program week after week. We're always happy to party with you guys, whether or not MLW was kicking ass or not. We love you guys and we want to kick ass with you.